Well, welcome to another edition of Pancreas School. I saw a patient uh, this week in the, in the outpatient cancer center, and uh, he had a tumor of the left side of the pancreas. And our Pancreas School videos are now out on YouTube. And um, I realized that I didn't have a Pancreas School video for he and his wife to look at, which described our approach to that, uh, to that tumor. So I thought we would go over a few things. And again, I'm gonna start with uh, human anatomy and uh, we'll put the pancreas uh, in uh, in purple. It sits behind the stomach. And remember that uh, we have the bile duct up here that comes down and it joins with the pancreatic duct. Liver here, stomach, this is the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. Just remember the spleen is here. Tumors in the pancreas can occur either in the head, body, or tail of the gland. Uh, and remember the tumors in the head of the gland, if we're to put a tumor in here, they oftentimes are diagnosed when they're, uh, when they're earlier in stage, uh, when they're smaller because they can obstruct the bile duct and the patient turns yellow and, uh, and therefore they will go to a doctor. Tumors that occur in the body or the tail of the pancreas <laughs> may not cause symptoms until they've uh, grown a little bit larger and or spread to other parts of the body, namely the liver, uh, the lining of the abdomen called the peritoneum or even the lungs. But uh, not infrequently, tumors in the body and tail of the pancreas uh, can actually be uh, can be operable, uh, and we again treat those patients as we uh, have explained in our pancreas school uh, edition on on treatment sequencing with chemotherapy, radiation, and then surgery. I wanted to go over a couple of the complexities of these tumors, especially in the pancreatic body, and I'm just going to leave a little bit of the stomach and the pancreas there. But I wanted to go over the, the, the issues that really uh, raise uh, complexity for tumors in the pancreatic body, and it's largely uh, blood vessels. And remember that the liver, and we've gone over this a few times, the liver has a dual blood supply. Veins go uh, into the liver as well as arteries. And the veins that drain the liver look like this. And you'll remember this from other episodes of pancreas school, this is liver, and this would be the portal vein, this would be the superior mesenteric vein, all of your intestines are here, and uh, so that when you eat uh, a, a lunch, you have a ham and cheese sandwich, uh, a lot of the nutrients have to be processed through the liver that then drains back into the inferior vena cava and then back to the heart where the blood then gets oxygenated and is pumped out into the arterial system. <laughs> uh, the spleen sits over here. And this is the vein that then, that then drains the spleen. The liver also has uh, an arterial system. It needs to have both oxygenated uh, arterial blood that goes to the liver as well as venous blood that goes to the liver. Uh, if we put our heart up here, the heart gives off uh, the aorta, which goes down through the diaphragm. It goes in back there. And uh, the aorta gives off uh, two main blood vessels, uh, the celiac artery. And I'll put this right here, the superior mesenteric artery. So this goes to all of the intestines. The celiac artery then uh, gives off a branch that goes to the liver, just like this. So that you can see that the celiac artery gives off the hepatic artery, which goes to the liver. It then gives off a branch that goes to the spleen, the splenic artery, and it gives off a branch that goes to the stomach, which is the left gastric artery. And unfortunately, the pancreas sits on right on top of all this, and if it's not at all infrequent 
that we have a tumor that may actually sit right here. If I uh, drew the pancreas here in purple for pancreas, uh, the pancreas would sit just like this, just like that. And then we're putting a tumor right in the middle of the pancreas or the body of the pancreas. And you can see that uh, depending upon where it's located, it may involve the hepatic artery. It typically would completely occlude the splenic vein. And sometimes it may even go down to touch the superior mesenteric artery. So here at the Medical College of Wisconsin, we have described a number of techniques of how to deal with, with these arteries. At the end of the operation, uh, the liver has to have an artery going to the liver. There has to be a vein going to the liver. The intestines have to have unimpeded venous return into the liver, or the intestines will not work correctly. Uh, the superior mesenteric artery that goes to the intestines has to be intact. And as mentioned, there has to be an arterial blood supply that also goes to the liver. Liver has to have both an artery and a vein. If I were to expand this area looking just at the arterial circulation, because that's what's most important, <coughs> typically the celiac artery looks like this. It goes up and it gives off first a branch to the, uh, to the stomach, and this is that left gastric artery. I'm kind of blowing up this whole area. And then, uh, and then it s divides into the splenic artery and to the hepatic artery, giving off a branch down to the pancreatic head, and then going up to the liver with the left and right hepatic artery. So this would be the common hepatic artery, and this would be the splenic artery, and here in behind is that left gastric artery going to the stomach. So when pancreas tumors uh, involve <coughs> this area and they completely envelop these arteries, it typically will look like this, uh, or it can even look like look like this. You can see that all of those would need to be removed. And the operation that we probably have the largest experience in the world with is reconnecting, uh, and the aorta is down here, the celiac artery right here with the common hepatic artery right here. One could actually leave these arteries simply completely removed. However, in our opinion, especially in older adults, it's, uh, it, there, are, there are a number of advantages to having forward flow uh, in the hepatic artery rather than just simply stealing blood from the pancreas to go to the liver. Uh, having forward flow in the, um, in the hepatic artery that also uh, uh, delivers a greater amount of blood supply to the stomach, especially if this left gastric artery um, and the splenic artery need to be removed. So tumors in the pancreatic body uh, uh, achieve their local complexity. In other words, what makes them operable or inoperable typically due to the involvement of the arteries and veins in this region of the body. Um, reconnecting, removing, reconstructing these artery and veins uh, has typically been a, a huge area of interest for our pancreatic cancer group here at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Again, the patients receive chemotherapy, then radiation, then surgery. Surgery often involves removing the left part of the pancreas, usually about 65% of the pancreas, the spleen, associated arteries, and we typically reconstruct these arteries with the saphenous vein in the leg, the same vein that is used frequently for coronary bypass surgery. Smaller uh, veins are used for the arteries. Larger veins, typically the internal jugular vein in the left neck, if we need to replace the, uh, uh, the portal vein or the superior mesenteric vein. Remember that the pancreas has two functions. It makes digestive enzymes. 
It also makes hormones, the most common being insulin. The pancreas, unlike the liver, does not regenerate. So if we take out 65% of the pancreas, or even if we take out the whole pancreas, the patient will oftentimes require insulin. If we do a partial pancreatectomy, uh, we can oftentimes predict that based upon what their blood sugar control is prior to surgery. Obviously, if we take out the entire pancreas, then insulin will be necessary. Uh, we're very fortunate here at uh, MCW to have a diabetes management team. Dr. Paul Knudsen runs it and does an amazing job. Uh, in fact, he, he and, his, and his team of nurse practitioners and PAs get plugged into our patients uh, well before they go to the operating room. They have the whole surgery schedule. They see the patients in the recovery room and manage, manage their sugar really, uh, really beautifully. Uh, in summary, um, uh, we've done multiple uh, uh, videos on the Whipple operation, which is the right side of the pancreas. Uh, the, uh, this episode of Pancreas School focused on the body and tail of the pancreas. Typically, the spleen will be removed, associated blood vessels, which are then put back together again. So hopefully this was helpful. I know the anatomy is uh, fairly complicated, but this is, will serve as a little bit of a primer and allow you uh, a background information so that when you meet with your physician team, you'll have maybe two or three pointed questions about the surgery uh, and how it's done and, and, and what the postoperative recovery would be like. Join us next time for another edition of Pancreas School.